Today we have a massive bracket full of Kendrick Lamar albums, Eminem albums, and Kanye West albums. We're gonna work through this whole thing and find the best album out of all of them. This has not only their solo work, but also their collab work. Like you can see right here, Kid See Ghost, Bad Meets Evil. So yeah, we're gonna work through all this to find the best album. If you're new and you like music content, make sure to subscribe and like the video. We're coming out with music content multiple times a week. So without any more talking, let's get started. Starting in the top left, 808s and Heartbreaks versus The Re-Up. Pretty easy for me. I'm gonna say 808s and Heartbreaks changed the whole way music is made, which is very common with Kanye West. It seems like he drops the album and then people try and not copy the style, but they take a lot of inspiration from it. 808s is one of those pivotal albums in my opinion. Next up, Slim Shady LP versus Kid C Ghost. I actually have the Slim Shady LP right here. I do not have Kid C Ghost. But even with that personal bias of owning the album, I think I have to take Kid C Ghost. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? The album's not too long, but it's very like concise. It's perfect to me. The sample flips are amazing. Kanye West on the production just completely compliments Kid Cudi to me. So I'm gonna take Kid C Ghosts. Late registration versus music to be murdered by side B. Once again, I think Eminem might lose this one. I mean, album is too iconic. Maybe with time, music to be murdered by will age better to me, but this has just made too much of an impact. Moving on, we got Section 80 versus Ye. Off the bat, I'm gonna take Section 80. It's got some very underrated tracks. This is one of Kendrick Lamar's most slept on albums. Doesn't get the love it deserves and completely shaped the future of Kendrick's music to me. Didn't make as much of an impact as these three, in my opinion, but still better than Ye. Great for Kendrick Lamar's future and helped shape him as a person. Now this next one is very easy. Damn versus Relapse, I'm taking Relapse. Rhyme schemes are amazing, storytelling is amazing. It just shows the versatility of Eminem. Even once you understand the shock value from him, he can still just up it. The time in his life, pretty inspirational to see him coming back from, you know, the five years off. Good story behind it. But yeah, I'm taking relapse. Yeezus first graduation, I'm taking graduation any day. Graduation has aged perfectly to me. And it's one of those albums, like I said, has made such an impact on music, changed the way everyone has made music. So yeah, Graduation. The Life of Pablo versus Marshall Mathers LP2. I know there's a lot of Kanye fans in my YouTube shorts talking about how much they love The Life of Pablo. I've listened to it, nothing really resonated with me too much. Kanye recently was talking about how he bodied Kendrick on the verse of, what's it called? No More Parties in LA, I believe and I just don't agree. But Marshall Mathers LP2 is following up one of the greatest rap albums of all time. And I don't think it did the first album justice. I'm gonna take The Life of Pablo, but just know that was close. And I, I'm not a big fan of The Life of Pablo, to be honest. But the next, it's very easy for me to take my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. A side A of Music To Be Murdered By is just not that good to me. Once again, people debate that in the YouTube shorts, but just personal preference. I think comparing this album to the rest of Eminem's catalog is just like, it's just guaranteed to be a decline, you know, in performance because of how good his early work was. Then we got Marshall Mathers LP 1 versus Recovery. This should be pretty easy. I think we'd all agree Marshall Mathers LP, greater impact, completely changed his career, made a big impact for him. So yeah. Over here, Good Music, Cruel Summer versus Untitled, Unmastered. This is kind of interesting because neither of these are praised very often for being you know, the best albums from these artists. This is by Kanye, by the way, and this is Kendrick Lamar. But I'm gonna take Kendrick Lamar's album, Untitled Unmastered. The only problem with it to me is trying to tell someone to listen to a track and you just have to say like, Untitled Track 4. It's kind of hard to like, explain to people, but for people that know, he's got some very good music on here. I believe it was The Leftovers from, what's it called, To Pimp a Butterfly? I believe it's The Leftovers from that. So it's got some amazing tracks on it. Amazing samples, amazing production, all of it's good. I'm gonna take that over Kanye's album. If you haven't heard Good Music, Cruel Summer, I wouldn't be surprised. It's not like a huge album, so. Moving on, I have a hot take. I have Infinite over Jesus is King. This is Eminem's first album. Wasn't released officially, he just sold CDs out of his car. The rhyme schemes on this album are so underrated. The production is amazing. It's not like any Eminem song you've ever heard. If you're someone that doesn't like Eminem or you think he's overrated, I recommend checking this out because it sounds completely different. And to be honest, his rhyme schemes are just as crazy, if not better, if you pick the right tracks. It's a little hit or miss, not as consistent as something like a Kanye West album, but I'm gonna take Infinite. Then To Pimp a Butterfly vs Bad Meets Evil. Bad Meets Evil is a collaboration album between Royce and Eminem. To Pimp a Butterfly pretty easily, didn't have to think too hard about that one. Bad Meets Evil is a great album, but the cultural impact from To Pimp a Butterfly can't really be matched. So if we're going based off of cultural impact, To Pimp a Butterfly probably already wins the whole thing, but let's keep going. Watch the Throne versus College Dropout. I'm gonna take College Dropout, it's more iconic. 
kind of shaped his whole career right in the beginning. Revival versus the Eminem show, that is not, that's a no-brainer, the Eminem show. Revival is like Eminem, but pop sellout, in my opinion. Couple good tracks, you know, Castle, A Rose, some people like Offended. For the average rap fan, you're gonna like the Eminem show over Revival, but if you're like a pop or you listen to the radio, something like that, you might take Revival. I doubt it though. Good Kid Mad City versus Encore. No brainer once again, Good Kid Mad City. The jump in quality from, where's it at, section 80 all the way to Good Kid Mad City. Not a very long gap between the times that he recorded them or at least released them, but Good Kid Mad City is amazing. Killed the whole track list, can't pick a single skip on that whole album. So I'm gonna take Good Kid Mad City. Even the skits are amazing. And then Kamikaze against Shady XV, I believe it's called, 15. I'm gonna take Kamikaze, it's an actual album. This is kind of like a compilation. I'm gonna take Kamikaze. I love the surprise drop. I love the raw emotion you get from him. How quick it was recorded and released. I think it was a perfect comeback album after the hate from Revival that we just talked about. All right, we made it to round two. If I eliminated your favorite album, I'm sorry. I also had to eliminate one of my favorite albums with the Slim Shady LP, but without any bias, I'm sorry, I kind of had to take it out. But we got 808s and Heartbreaks versus Kids See Ghosts. I'm gonna take 808s. Kids See Ghosts is a smaller track list like I talked about, but 808s is perfect all the way through. If I remember correctly, I think it's pretty good. Can't think of any skips off the top of my head, and it's not a collaboration. It's also had more time to age and show the impact that it's made. So I'll take 808s. Section 80 versus Late Registration. I'm going Late Registration. I think that's a universal take. I think if you look at these four right here, no matter if you disagree with round one, whatever you pick, I think Late Registration is making it to this round right here. So in the end, it all worked out. Relapse versus Graduation. This is crazy. Both of these albums have aged pretty good. Relapse vs. Graduation is very interesting. My personal bias wants to take Relapse just because I would listen to Relapse more than I'd listen to Graduation. But impact wise, the fact that Eminem also says he doesn't like Relapse, he doesn't like the accents. All the fans seem to like it though, but Eminem's not confident in it. Graduation's definitely made a greater impact. You know, it's more, it's more widely known and like agreed upon that it's a great album. See it all over TikTok, you see it at sports games. I'm gonna have to take Graduation. Dark Twisted Fantasy versus The Life of Pablo. This could be a debate. I see people's top fives, they usually have both of these. Every top five I see does, and Graduation. I'm gonna take Dark Twisted Fantasy though. I think this is the best album Kanye has ever made. Perfect production, like I said with his other ones, perfect samples. And there's a reason you see it everywhere. There's a reason you hear all of the lights at sports games. There's a reason Runaway is like a meme at this point, pressing the key on the piano. I'm gonna take Dark Twisted Fantasy. All right, to the right side of the bracket, Marshall Mathers LP versus Untitled Unmastered. That is very easy. Marshall Mathers LP is moving on. Oops, I just deleted it. It's moving on. I think we could all agree on that. We're also all gonna agree on Infinite versus To Pimp a Butterfly. To Pimp a Butterfly. Greater impact, greater lyrics, you know, meaning behind the whole album. Much greater than the mixtape that I'd call Infinite. Eminem Show versus College Dropout. I'm gonna take the Eminem Show. It's a perfect fusion of like rock, rap. He just went mainstream, but I don't think he sold out. He still stuck to what he felt was controversial. What people didn't agree with, what people hated on him for, he stuck with it. He didn't like back down. He stood on his business, like I like to say on this channel, and he made the Eminem show. Both of these albums appeal to the mainstream and to the fan base, in my opinion, of both Kanye and Eminem. But I'm gonna take the Eminem show. Good Kid Mad City versus Kamikaze. This is pretty easy, Good Kid Mad City. Just like To Pimp a Butterfly, you know, great meaning behind the album, great storytelling. Kamikaze's, in my opinion, more of just going fast and angry rapping. I know he has like responding back to the media with all that, but Good Kid Mad City does it better. Now that we're moving on to the semifinals, I gotta make sure my face cam's not in the way of anything. I'm gonna zoom out. Let me know if you disagree with anything. So far we have all these in the top eight. Semifinals, let's get started. 808's first late registration. I'm gonna take 808's, to be honest with you. 808's is pretty underrated. I know a lot of people like to talk about college dropout, late registration, and graduation. And I agree, those are great albums, but 808's is underrated to me. It's made a great impact on music. It's changed the game more. So I'm gonna take 808's. Graduation versus Dark Twisted Fantasy. This is kind of rough because I said Dark Twisted Fantasy is his best album, but favorite would be graduation i'd rather listen to graduation if we're talking about greatness it's dark twisted fantasy if we're talking about my favorite it's graduation so i don't even know i don't know what i'd pick i'm not even exaggerating i just thought about this for like two minutes straight i'm gonna take 
Dark Twisted Fantasy. Just because looking over here, I took to Pimp a Butterfly and Good Kids Mad City based off the impact. And I have to keep that, I have to keep that equal. I have to go by the same standards. I can't just pick my favorites. This is the greatest. So I'm going to take Dark Twisted Fantasy. Moving on to this side of the bracket, Marshall Mathers LP versus to Pimp a Butterfly. Once again, favorite wise, I'd rather listen to Marshall Mathers LP. I think there's a wider range of any mood I'm in I can listen to versus the emotional like roller coaster you get from to pimp a butterfly but greatness wise to pimp a butterfly no question and Eminem show versus good kid mad city I'm gonna take the Eminem show both of these albums are great they both have you know wide genre of subgenres in rap if, if that's what you want to call it but the way Eminem fused rock with rap in the Eminem show is honestly unmatched i haven't seen anyone do it the same way as this good kid mad city is a great rap album but that's where it stops it's a great rap album it's got good rap substance in it but eminem show just kind of goes beyond that and it pushed him into the mainstream greater impact with eminem show i'm gonna say on to the top four 808s 808s and heartbreaks my beautiful dark twisted fantasy to pimp a butterfly in the eminem show so for 808s versus dark twisted fantasy I'm gonna take my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, like I said, best album he's made. Biggest impact I've seen from a Kanye West album, so that's gonna advance for me. And then on this side of the bracket, I have to take To Pimp a Butterfly. I'm sorry, Eminem fans. I'd honestly rather listen to the Eminem show, but substance-wise, you know, lyrical topic-wise, I know there's some important things on Eminem show, but To Pimp a Butterfly is honestly, here's the final answer, one of the greatest rap albums of all time. I would list it as the greatest rap album of all time. I know I'm young, so I kind of have a bias. But yeah, like I said, it touches on all the important things Kendrick wanted to talk about on the album. He got a Tupac clip that I believe was unheard of for the outro, which is huge. Like, you don't see anybody doing that. And yeah, it completely changed the game and changed the culture at the time of it dropping. To this day, it's aged perfectly. So has the Eminem show, so has Dark Twisted Fantasy. But To Pimp a Butterfly is like on a whole nother level, if you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, that's my rap album bracket. If you agree, let me know. If you disagree, let me know down below. Right up in this corner, wait, right up in that corner, I have a bunch of Eminem videos. I have a bunch of music tutorials. So if you're interested in this, let me know. Let me know what the next bracket should be about. I have tier list ideas too. And thank you for watching.